the Marcus comment says in the very first statement, this question is poorly attempted in general. In fact, I think most people fail this question. The first statement, this question is poorly attempted in general. Let's see how we can do this question. Okay, we need to get our orientation correct. There are a lot of notations here, but we know, we know. Okay, we are no longer in our secondary school. Notation comes with a meaning. And you cannot just suddenly acquire this. You need to develop the, the, your, your ability to want to see the meaning that is behind the notation. Okay, so, so we want to make sure that we, we capture this, okay? The diagram shows this guy throwing the short put. Projection is according to this curve. The velocity is V, okay, which I guess this is the velocity. They didn't really indicate this. Uh, the point where the short put is left the person is the point O. And the angle that it makes with the horizontal is this angle theta. O is 1.5 meters above A. This is A. And we are looking at this whole thing being represented on an XY plane. So we must try to imagine this. In, in our math, one of the beauty is it is how, how much it is trying to use, not, not language. Okay, but math is trying to use its own way to describe the world that is around us by using numbers, by using facts. Language is also doing that, but uh, they, are, they, are, they are accomplishing different tasks. So, so we are trying to look at this as if it is, a, it is on an XY plane for the trajectory of the projectile motion. X axis is parallel to the horizontal here. And the equation that is given to me is this. Okay, I'm glad they didn't ask me to deduce this equation. I'm so glad. So, but this equation by itself, um, it seriously doesn't look that welcoming or so. We have a x tangent theta minus gx square divided by 2v square cosine square theta. It's a very simple substitution that is like this. With the information that is given, this equation is being boiled down to this minus x square over 20 cosine square theta. I'm going to use this equation throughout. G is a constant, V is a constant, uh, but x and theta, they are variables. So I want to see them very carefully, okay? So x and x theta, y, they are all variables. So the first thing, I want to show that H satisfies this equation. Can you see the same thing happening? Just like the very first question that we did. There's a lacking in instruction. Right? There's a lacking in instruction. Later, we will read the Marcus comment together. They try to describe almost the same thing. Sorry, do you raise your hand? <laughs> they try to describe almost the same thing. The students didn't really know what to do when they're looking at this question. Let, let's think about it. We need to prepare for this, okay? So what, what, what are we expected to find? We're expected to find an equation in terms of h and theta. Okay, we're expected to find an equation in terms of h and theta. Which means that for the equation that is given to me, I need to find a way to replace this x and y. And I need to introduce h. Theta is already here. You know, maybe I'm going to introduce and more theta, I'm not sure. But I need to introduce both h and theta into here. And I need to remove x and y. How can I do this with the information that is given to me so far? It is a three marks question. How can I do this? Okay, I have to tell you very honestly, I don't find this very difficult. I, I thought this is very easy. I thought it was very generous of uh, TJC to give three marks. But when I read the teacher's, the Marcus comment, it was, it was very different from what I perceive. They said that a lot of people were actually stuck in this part one. But let me give you, give you a few seconds. You think about it. Anyone, any suggestion? You have a suggestion? It's very easy, you know, it's very easy. Okay, provided that, you look at the solution, then you'll be very easy. Okay, so, so, so now that uh, you don't see the solution, you can feel that, wow, you know, you, can, you don't really know how to find it, right? Where, where, where is H? Where is H? H is here. H is here, from A to B. 
If you were to look at age as a number, I don't think it is easy to do that. But if you see age that is uh, customized for the question, I mean, I will definitely be needing this distance AB, which is age. How is this age related to the system that is given to me by the question? What is the system? What is the system that I'm looking at? A Cartesian system, right? A Cartesian axis system. And age is within this Cartesian axis system. So I need to find this kind of clue. So how is H being represented on a Cartesian system? The coordinates of point B is H minus 1.5, right? H minus 1.5. That is what I was trying to say. We need to, we need to get more accustomed to not just looking at alphabets. In secondary school, alphabets usually represent uh, numbers. Okay, I mean, sometimes they can say A is an apple, but in the end, the apple is still representing the number of apples. So, so they are representing numbers. Okay, they do represent something, they do have meaning, but the meaning is usually just uh, numbers. Okay, because we are trying to get used to our algebra. But you have already gotten used to your algebra. Now it is time that the numbers, that now it is, it is time that you go beyond the numbers. G numerically is 10. But at the same time, G is the gravity. <coughs> G is the gravity. You know, so, so, so H is that distance. Within the entire system, H gives me the coordinate, the X coordinate of point B. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, uh, can, can I just pick on the sentence that you, <laughs> you have just used? Says that just Substitute minus 1.5 and h into the thing. You know, at b, it is h and minus 1.5. You know, she chose to use the word just substitute this in. You know, this word is, is, it seems very easy when you talk about it, but students fail. You know, you know how many people, they didn't know that they are just supposed to substitute this in? Because they, they didn't try to integrate the meaning of everything together into the system. The system is trying to tell you this. So we are going to try to make sure that we capture this, okay? Imitate this, do this again, just relieve the whole process again. You realize that you just need to try once or two times. You then, if you can just continue to try a few more times, actually it's very easy to pick this up. It's not difficult, it's just a change in mindset that we need, you know, so that we can move on to our university. So I have this, so now I have a minus 1.5, this is equal to h tangent theta, minus away, this I have a h square over 20 cosine square theta. So I'm supposed to prove that, um, okay, this is probably going to be more uh, algebraic manipulations that I'm going to be trying out. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of manipulation. Okay, I'm going to multiply this across to the other side. I have a minus 30 per sine square theta. This is going to be equal to 20 h tangent theta per sine square theta minus h square. And according to what I'm supposed to prove, I need all the double angle formula stuff. Curry, it is not h0, it is h and minus 1.5, right, Kauri? h0 is here. Okay, Kauri suggested h0, which is good, okay, because you are looking at it from the, from the coordinate point of view, but, but you, read, you read the coordinate wrongly, it should be, this is minus 1.5, because the question says that O is above, O is the origin, O is above the ground, so the y coordinate is minus 1.5. <laughs> okay, so we are going to make use of Cosine 2a is equal to 2 cos square a minus 1. We're going to make use of sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cosine a. Trigonometric identity, I think this is uh, fine. This, I'm going to rewrite it as minus 30. Uh, if I were to use this, then I will have a cosine 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2. This is going to be 20 h. Here, we will have a sine theta cosine theta minus h square. So we have a minus 15 of cosine 2 theta plus 1. This is equal to 10 h sine 2 theta minus h square. Perfect. I'm going to bring everything over to the right hand side, to the left hand side. Now let me see. Now we have a h square. 
then minus away uh, 20, minus away, this is, oh, oh yeah, correct. This is going to be 10 h sine 2 theta, then minus away 15 cosine 2 theta, minus 15, this is equal to 0. Okay, I've shown what I'm supposed to show, done. Next, from this, theta and h varies. Theta and h varies, I want to show that the stationary value of h occurs when theta satisfy the following equation, which is that equation over there. I don't know whether you are already getting comfortable. I don't think it will get easier just by one session that is like this. But I wonder if you are getting more comfortable by when you are looking at question that has a lack in instruction because we are seeing it once again. Okay, this part, there's not a lot of instruction. We are supposed to find them ourselves. Because in, if this were to be in the secondary school, they will say something that is like, by making use of point B, you know, prove this. You know, secondary school will do something that is like this. They will add just one little thing that is there, but you didn't know that they actually tell you what to do already. So they bring and draw your focus to this. Ah, find this. Okay, secondary school will do this. So now we are looking at it again. They, they just tell you that, hey, Stationary point, show this. Not as bad, not as bad. Okay, I'm going to try, try to find stationary point, which uh, I'm going to take this, I will, I will differentiate this with respect to theta. And this is where our differentiation techniques discussion comes in. Because our differentiation technique discussion tells us that the focus is not on the technique. Technique is essential, but technique is not going to make my differentiation stronger. That technique is too similar to the secondary school. What that is going to make my differentiation stronger is my ability to improvise, my ability to make decisions, my ability to strategize. So I look at this. I want to find dh, d theta. Should we make h the subject? Because we can. Okay, we can make h the subject. This is, I can see this as a quadratic equation in terms of h. So to make h the subject, we can very easily apply the quadratic formula. It's just that I'm going to have a plus minus with a square root. Applying the quadratic formula is fine, but the problem is with the plus minus, which I probably need to decide whether it is a plus or minus, with the square root, it makes differentiation not a very efficient process. So to, to make sure that I experience a more efficient, because many times in the improvisation, it is about efficiency. You know, that's why we need strategy. It is not about differentiation anymore. It's how you differentiate, how you strategize, how you prepare so that it can be very easily differentiated. So I think I'm not going to do anything to this. I'm going to just differentiate this whole thing by using implicit differentiation with respect to theta. We have a 2h dh d theta, then minus away 10 uh, product rule dh d theta sine 2 theta minus 10h. Then we have a 2 cosine 2 theta minus away 15 minus 2 sine 2 theta, this is equal to 0. I'm, I'm trying to prove this equation, okay? And that equation has just theta. So I'm, I'm expecting that to happen, okay? That equation has just theta. So to make that happen, I guess I need to make use of the fact that h is experiencing a stationary value. So I'm going to let dh d theta be equal to 0. Do I need to manipulate this? I mean, if it is simple enough manipulation, I think it is fine. But just like what I was telling you about y is going to mx plus c, which is not always super necessary, I'm not going to waste time to do too much manipulation, okay? I think the fastest thing that I can do next is just to simply let this be equal to zero. So complicated terms that is like this will disappear, and I'm going to be left with just this and this, which is going to be minus 20h cosine 2 theta plus 30 sine 2 theta is equal to zero. This is unexpected. This is unexpected. Because I'm expecting myself to differentiate, let dh d theta be equal to zero, then I should be able to get that. So I didn't expect myself to get this, which still has an h inside. I, I thought the instruction has already been given to me, but I, I just didn't expect that, hey, you know, I, I followed the so-called instruction, but uh, I'm still not getting there. In fact, it looks extremely complicated. This looks very, very easy. What should we do? Sorry? Uh, I said I expand this. 
As I expand this to uh, the single angle, uh, using the double angle to expand this. Okay. Hey, I can I can see JV, you're, you're shaking your head to what she says. That like you sh you think she shouldn't expand. Are you shaking your head? Uh, like you're sad about yourself, or you're say <laughs> you're saying that she, we shouldn't expand. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I expand as in. Exactly. Where expansion seems to be a possibility, but it doesn't come with a, it doesn't come with a direction, you know. So so it's a random thing that we do, which we should try to minimize. Because every random thing that you you try, um, you are, you are hoping that you can get it correct, but we should try to, um, we should try to aim for try and error. But we try and error because I saw a reason that is behind it. Then I try according to that reason. Then there will be a higher chance that I'll get it correct within a shorter time. What, what is my aim? My aim is to get an equation in terms of theta. Which means that my aim is to try to remove h from this equation. How did we remove x, p, uh, how do we remove x and y from the equation in question number 5? We, sorry, substitution. We saw simultaneous equation. If I have one thing to try, I'm going to try to remove that h. If, I, if only I can replace that h by theta, I'm going to try that. And I have one equation here. I have one equation here. I have another equation here. I'm going to try this. I'm going to just try to see whether I can remove that h. Because I'm, I'm very sure I can remove that h. It's just I'm not sure whether by using these two equations, I'll be able to get that. Okay, I'm going to try in this direction because I see the possibility of fulfilling what the question is trying to say. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, since I'm going to be doing a substitution, then uh, I'm going to make h a subject. h is going to be equal to 3 over 2. This divide will be tangent to theta. So I'm going to call this equation number 2. This is equation number 1. I'm going to sub equation number 2 into equation number 1. It, it is really okay to do try and error. In fact, H2Math actually has a lot of try and error. But, but, the, but the idea is to try with a proper reasoning. That's, a, that's, a, that's the difference. So, so this we can try. If I'm wrong, it is okay. I can just try something else. But I, I know it is backed up by a logical, logical enough uh, reason why I should spend time to go and try this. So let's try this. I'll sub this into here, which will give me a 9 over 4 tangent square 2 theta minus 10 h, which is uh, multiply this uh, 3 over 2, tangent 2 theta, then sine 2 theta minus 15 cosine 2 theta minus 15 is equal to 0. Let me do a bit of simplification while we're actually trying to show. Um, we are trying to show, oh, actually this tangent square 2 theta looks pretty good because it is part of what I'm supposed to be showing. So I have this, then tangent square 2 theta, minus away this, this is 15, this times this, I have a, a, do I need to change this? Yeah, I don't think I need to change this. I'm going to just leave this as sine 2 theta, tangent 2 theta, minus away, this is 15, cosine 2 theta, minus 15 is equal to 0. I just need this coefficient here to become 3. So I'll multiply this by 4 over 3. Then multiply this by 4 over 3. Even this 4 over 3 is with a bit of consideration because I'm trying to show that thing which the coefficient is 3. I just want to make sure that the rest of the coefficients are correct. This times this, minus 20. Same. This times this, minus 20. Minus 20. Okay. So now I have a 3 tangent square 2 theta minus 20. Sine 2 theta tangent 2 theta minus 20. Cosine 2 theta minus 20. This is equal to zero. And again, again, we are seeing a question where if you to just focus on the solution itself, it's not difficult. It is independently generating a set of strategy to come out of this solution that is going to be a challenge. It is a challenge, okay? Even for me, I feel that it is a challenge because this kind of question, you cannot prepare for it yet. You, you will waste, you will take up time. 
for this to happen in the exam. And if you are not even used to this, it is going to be worse in the exam. So for, from here, we are supposed to find the stationary value of H. To get our bearing <coughs> uh, once again, we know that this equation here was obtained after we have let dH d theta be equal to zero, which means that by solving the value of theta in this equation, it should give me the value of theta that caused h to be stationary. So I'll solve for the value of theta. After I've solved for the value of theta, I can sub it into this. Uh, probably no one will sub it into this. I'll sub it into this, then I'll be able to find the value of h that caused this to be equal to, that, that caused h to be stationary. Okay, I, 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 I want to give you a split second, okay? That means uh, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to split second Think about a, a way that you will do it. Then after that, I will just uh, show you the show you what the marker says. Okay, split second. Okay, you must decide within a split second. So, what do you think you will do to solve this? Okay, split second. <clears throat> Let's see the marker's comment. This last part, right? So many people solve it using algebraic method. So within that split second, if you are thinking about shifting this here and there, you are already trying to solve it using an algebraic method, but TGC says, this is simply going to be solved by using a GC. Draw the graph, find the intersection with the x-axis, solve for theta. When Singapore moved into H2 math, there's only one very prominent change. The syllabus remain almost exactly the same. Uh, not exactly, but there's some change in syllabus. But one very prominent change, which not just students, okay, even the teachers need to go through that, that, that uh, adaptation, which is GC. Before H2 math, there was no GC. So one thing that happens in H2 math is GC, and Cambridge actually says this in their instruction. By default, students are supposed to solve everything using the GC, but that's not what a lot of us do. For a lot of us, by default, we are just not going to use a GC. We are going to solve everything by not using a GC, but Cambridge says otherwise. By default, every question should be solved using a GC, unless the question says that you cannot do that. That was the reason why Singapore moved into H2 math, is because we want to learn to depend on our GC. You know, you know just because during my time we don't, use a, we don't use GC, I have spent the bulk of my JC doing calculations, which the machine can do for me. That means I could have learned more, like you guys. You know, but I spent that time to do calculations. Press calculator, calculate. Then, then when I grew up, I realized the computer can take, take that you know, do that way better than me, but the computer cannot do this. The computer cannot do, cannot make decisions that's like this. The computer cannot independently think, and we can. Well, that is why the GC is very, very crucial. Use your GC to solve this last part.